Well, how long would you fight for justice if you witnessed part of your city levelled in the blink of an eye? If your home's windows were blasted in and shattered all around you? If hundreds in your city were killed and no one was ever held accountable? Well, three years ago today, one of the biggest non-nuclear explosions ever recorded blasted through Beirut in Lebanon. Now, on the third anniversary of that devastating explosion, a day of mourning is being observed. We do know that the blast originated in a warehouse full of ammonium nitrate that had been improperly stored for years. But to date, no official investigation into the cause of the explosion itself has been completed. Well, I was on air when CNN got word of that explosion, and I will never forget those images. No one in Lebanon, quite frankly, could. CNN's Ben Wiedemann was based in Beirut at the time, and he witnessed it, he felt it, and he lived through it. And I just want to take you all back to what was that dreadful moment. We are just getting some pictures into CNN of what is a large explosion uh, in Lebanon's capital, Beirut. Witnesses, including our own correspondents there, have heard an explosion. They have seen smoke rising. No word yet on the cause. This video just coming into CNN showing the moment of the blast. The first of these images taken what? from a nearby boat. What? What? Swear, bro! And this video, another video that's uh, just come in, showing the moment of that what? explosion. Uh, in this next video, you'll see a huge cloud of smoke and flames. The Lebanese Red Cross uh, giving some idea of the scope of the impact of this. The disaster facing Beirut today, tweeting, quote, more than 30 teams are responding to the explosion. This, the Lebanese Red Cross, please make way for our ambulances. Well, Ben Wiedemann is amongst uh, the damage joining us uh, from Beirut. Uh, ben, what do we understand to have happened at this point? Well, this explosion took place in the port area. It was preceded by some sort of fire. It appears in a warehouse, uh, which, according to the official Lebanese national news agency, uh, contained fireworks. But to what we felt, and in this building, this is where CNN's office used to be, uh, it felt like an earthquake followed by a huge blast that blew out uh, the windows in this what was once our studio, and the window frames as well. Just uh, panning the camera around, you can get an idea of the level of damage uh, that happened. And this damage, of course, is duplicated throughout much of central Beirut. Well, it uh, became clearer over the hours of the um, devastation. This is a country that has endured tragedy after tragedy, year after year, decade after decade. Lebanese people have lived through an horrific 15-year civil war, followed by another bloody war with Israel less than a decade later, not to mention the crippling economy that has been in a state of demise for years. On August the 4th of 2020, People frantically rushed around the city in search of their missing loved ones, wondering why their fate had yet again subjected them to another tragedy and why their leaders had done nothing to protect them from this horrific blast. I reflected on all of this in the wake of the explosion, and sadly, much of what I said then still holds today. Have a listen. This is, whatever way you cut it, the manifestation of the multitude of endless avenues of miserable corruption in Lebanon. What is seen as a political oligarchy has 
for decades hollowed out the entire country from the inside in an endless and ceaselessly worsening series of dysfunction and theft. Yesterday, on Tuesday, August the 4th, in the early evening, we saw the most tremendous example of it, with much of the city laid waste in a blast unlike any it has ever seen. And so many are left wondering why was that ammonium nitrate stored at the port? How long was it there? Who knew about it and its risk? And who turned a blind eye? This, though, is just the latest and clearest example of a much wider system of dysfunction as government after government in Lebanon fails to do its most fundamental job and look after its people. So now, Beirut once adorned as the Paris of the Middle East, nestled between the aquamarine waters of the Mediterranean and those stunning hills of Mont Liban, sits scarred and ruined in a scale still incomprehensible yet again. This blast wasn't inevitable. The economic crisis wasn't inevitable. Nor the power cuts, nor the lack of jobs and basic systems. Across Lebanon's political spectrum, one ideology reigns supreme. What's in it for me? And then, so what's left for the people? Nothing, all too often, but despair.